Hi everybody and welcome back. We're starting chapter 12 on gravity and it's, uh, I'm actually going to abbreviate it a little bit right here. Um, you'll actually notice that I also didn't change my, uh, my years on here either, 2011-2012. So the good news is physics doesn't change in the course of uh, two or three years, so um, everything should pretty much be the same. But uh, let's just go ahead and get started and uh, I'll introduce the uh, whole idea behind uh, universal gravity. And that is, and you're probably seeing some boxes right here, um, Newton's law of universal gravity or gravitation, sometimes it's referred to as. All right, what, we're, what it says here is that there, a gravity, a force of gravity exists between any two objects. And we call them point objects because, say, you have like the Earth and the Moon. Well, you can pretend that they, you, you can sum up all of their mass into one teeny tiny point at the center of each of those things right there. So when we say a point object, that's what we really mean. So here's the Earth, oops, um, right here. And here's the Moon. I'll do it in gray. All right, we can pretend that they are exactly this distance apart, actually this distance apart from each other, from center to center right there. So you can pretend that they're actually points. Um, and all that mass is concentrated in, in those points right there. That's what we mean by point mass. So it, it can be mass one and mass two. Uh, mass A, mass B, whatever you want to call it, all right? And it's, it is attractive, all right? And uh, the magnitude of that force of gravity is summed up like this. The force of gravity between those two objects, any two objects, it doesn't have to be the Earth and the Moon, it can be you and your pencil, it can be you and anything else. Um, that force is equal to G, this, G, this letter G right here, which I'm going to describe in just a second times mass 1 times mass 2, and of course that's going to be in kilograms, right? Mass 2, over r squared. And what r is, you can think of it as the radius, or the distance right there. So that value right there is their r, okay? Mass of the Earth, mass of the Moon, the distance or radius from one to the other, r. Um, that's in the, in the denominator. And if um, we put this g out front, and I'll tell you what that is in just a second, but you can think of it as being multiplied times the numerator, right? That goes up top. So that's how to calculate that force, the actual gravitational force those two bodies feel pulling together. All right, so R is the distance, or, or, or the radius it actually stands for. And so what the heck is G right here? G is this uh, crazy number that we thank, uh, thank Newton for, and it, it's just a, it's a constant. It's a called the gravitational constant. Um, and it had to be worked out, but once it did, then we can use that in every equation right there. It's basically a multiplier that helps us turn our masses and distances into some sort of a force. And that constant is this. G is, is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. All right, so it's a very, very, very small number. Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. All right. Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Now, I'm not going to go bother to go into um, trying to describe that unit right there, but what it does is it accounts for kilograms and kilograms, and you've got meters right here. Now, your radius is going to be in meters, um, and your force is in newtons, all right? So naturally, G would have to have all those components in it for that, to, that equation to balance out. So um, that is our gravitational constant. And we tend to think of gravity as being something that kind of affects us all, which it does. Um, but we tend to think of it as being a strong thing, but it really isn't. This really, really tiny, it's uh, 0 0.000010, 11 zeros, and then 667, um, means that gravity is actually a very, very weak force. There's other forces that are much stronger. But anyway, that's the universal gravitational constant, and that's what we're going to be using um, uh, in, in for G. Okay? So, what happens if we increase this radius, however, if we go out some distance. Well, this is what happens. We go out, and since that radius, let me go back a second, is, you might say the force and the radius are inverses of each other, right? The radius is in, is in the denominator, so if that gets bigger, the force gets smaller, and if the force gets smaller, or force gets bigger, that gets smaller. So the inverse and the radius is squared, which means you have the relationship between force and radius having this kind of, um, well, we call it a, an inverse graph. 
All right, the, the closer together the objects are, the smaller the separation distance, or the smaller the separation radius, the bigger the force. But as you increase your radius, you, cre you increase your separation distance, that force drops off dramatically. Um, but never, never quite becomes zero. You are actually being affected by the gravity from a star billions of light years away right now, just to a very, very small degree. All right, so we call this the, the law of universal gravitation. That is, there's an in inverse square relationship between the force, the force of gravity, or the strength of gravity, um, and the distance, or the r. Okay? Gravity has an infinite range, so it stretches out into infinity. So that's why I said you're affected by stars billions of light years away. So it gets very, 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 very small, but never quite becomes zero, because you're still affected by it. All right? Um, but what we can do is we can... Um, Oops, this got cut off here, I think. Can I move this up? Let me see if I can try to. Um, oh, that got just cut off. Sorry about that. That should say, what should that say? There we go. Um, superposition. All right, and what that means is that you can take all the, the, the vectors, all the, the, the force vectors that are acting, that is the gravity force vectors that are acting on an object, and sum them up and actually uh, cancel a bunch of them out because you're being pulled by a star millions of light years away. So here's you right here. You're being pulled by that star, but you're also being pulled by this star millions of light years away as well. So to some degree, all those forces kind of, kind of cancel out. Um, so, we, uh, so one thing to make this easier is just to sum up, all, sum up all of the forces. So this should say it is a vector sum of each... Um, each of the other forces individually. All right, so sum up this force plus this. Well, they're acting in opposite directions, so they're going to cancel each other out. All right, so that's what we can do uh, with gravity, as well as other vectors as well. So let's do an example right here. This is going to be example one. All right, and we have um, an astronaut and a spaceship. So here, I'll draw this in blue. Um, so here's our astronaut right here in his astronaut suit, and here's a spaceship. Okay, way out, some distance away from him. Uh, and because they both have mass, there is a force of gravity between them. And that is 80 newtons. Okay. So what were to happen if at this distance right here, we were to take that and move the astronaut four times away? All right, that's what this says right here. So normally this distance d, whatever distance that is, he experiences a gravitational pull of 80 newtons, right? But now he moves out to 4D. So the spaceship or the space shuttle is way over here. Okay? So this is distance D. This is 4D. The question is, what is the force of gravity between them? Because it's going to be different because the force of gravity depends on distance, right? Well, let's write this out for a second. Let's write our, our um, gravitational uh, equation out so we can say in this scenario the force of gravity equals g times mass of the astronaut or we can call that a mass one times the mass of the spaceship that's mass two or you can call it mass one or mass two that's fine as well all over the distance or you might want to say the r squared all right and that equals 80 newtons, all right? Well, what's this down here? Well, we don't know the distance, we don't know the masses, but that's okay. The force of gravity, we'll call that at 4D, okay, it's a 4D right there, equals G times mass of the astronaut, times mass of the space shuttle, times 4D, that distance squared. All right, well, now what's the only difference right here? The only difference is this 4 in the denom denominator right here. And um, it's also squared because it's part of that D right there. So it's really like saying this. It's really like saying 1 over 4 squared times G mass of the astronaut, mass of the spaceship, over D squared. All right, well, what's, what's, what's 4 squared? We know that 4 squared is 16. All right, so that's... 16. So what this is saying is if he moves out 
four times this distance, and this distance creates a gravitational pull of 80 newtons. If he, pull, he moves out to the four times the original distance, then that means this is the same thing as right there. So the only difference is that it's going to be 1 16th now of the pull that he would feel. All right, so the force of gravity at four times the distance equals 1 16th times 80 newtons, and that's going to be 5 newtons. All right, so as you move out from an object, um, the force that you feel um, really tapers off drastically. You might think, all right, well, one, four times the distance, so maybe one-fourth the original pull, so it would be 20 newtons. No, 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 it's even less than that because of this inverse square relationship. Okay, that's example 12.1.